Hey, I'm Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and I'm super excited to bring you this video today. It's all about your subconscious, which has a lot to do with your nervous system. And before we dive in here, I just want to say like when I'm talking about the subconscious, I actually mean all of it. And I think all of it's kind of wrapped up in uh, emotions and your memory and automated behavior. So you can be you know, we could be talking about like subconscious loops that play, you know, below your awareness, but dictate a lot of um, how you're living your life, whether it's the thoughts you think or certain activities or being attracted to a certain type of person. Um, and so it can manifest physically in your fascia as well as in your external life in terms of your relationships and your communication and um, what you're conscious of or not conscious of. Um, but your subconscious lives in your body. Uh, recently, I took to Google and I wanted to know the actual definition of neuroscience according to neuroscience itself. And I was really fascinated and blown away by this. So um, maybe you already know what neuroscience is yourself. And whenever someone says the word neuroscience today, I automatically think brain right? Brain science. Um, and that's actually not the definition. When you look up neuroscience, it's the study of the nervous system. And that like, I don't know why that blew me away. And I, I feel a little bit confused or sad or frustrated that so much of the popular neuroscience videos today talk about the brain. Um, and my sense is that actually the brain is just a processing unit, like a computer, for all the input, the data, that is fed to it through the body, through the human consciousness, our mind, which, you know, doesn't really live in the brain, we think it does, but if you try to prove that, I think you're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> and so the, the brain, I think, is really like the processing unit of it. Or if you want to think about the brain in its totality, I like to think about it as kind of one thing, one system all working together. So we've got the nervous system component which lives in the body, and then we have the actual brain that processes all of that data that's getting gathered 24-7 from your nervous system. So that's my little spiel before we dive in here. So what I want to talk to you to about today are the six critical roles of the nervous system that I see playing out all the time in my clients and in my life. And of course there are others, uh, but these are like the really consistent big ones that I think we should all be aware of if you want to take what is in the subconscious and make it more conscious, right? Take more conscious control of your body, your life, your thoughts, your behaviors, all of it. So we're going to come back to this, this one up here. So just to, you know, ignore that for now. Um, and we're going to dive in here with number one. Kind of a duh, given everything I just said. But that's communication. So, you know, <laughs> one of the roles of the nervous system, and when I say the nervous system, I'm talking about all of it. So there are subsets of the nervous system, which we're actually going to dive into a little later. Uh, but the whole of your nervous system is always trying to gather data in different parts of your body for different reasons um, to communicate then to the brain and then, you know, make sure you stay alive, make sure you're okay, make sure everything's happening like it needs to, right? That your heart is pumping. Um, so from the super simplistic level, right, we can talk about like what is subconscious is, you know, hopefully you're breathing on a regular basis, even subconsciously, right? your heart is pumping blood, or maybe more accurately, the heart is moving blood through your body. There's some science out there and theories that the heart isn't actually a pump, and I tend to agree with it. Pretty fascinating um, to look into, but that's not the point of this. Uh, but essentially, right, all these processes are constantly happening due to the communication between the body and the brain, um, subconscious to you. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to consciously direct your lungs to breathe, for example. Um, and then it goes a lot deeper than that too, right? Communicating whether you feel safe, whether you are hungry, whether, um, you know, like anything, right? So this again is 
could go from your thought, the thoughts you think, the feelings you feel on a daily basis, your emotions um, consistently, to actual physical signals and communications. Uh, so there's a lot that goes into communication, but that's a huge part of the nervous system and its role in your body. Number two, is behavior. So, fascinating thing to think about in terms of the body and the nervous system is your body and your nervous system is actually trying to learn you, learn about your, you and your life and your choices and um, your behaviors so it can automate a lot of them. Uh, because if we had to get up every day and remember how to brew coffee and whether we liked sugar or cream in it or not, <laughs> um, right, if it was new every day, um, then we'd be, you know, pretty slow creatures. We wouldn't really get anywhere. We wouldn't be able to do much because we'd be constantly trying to remember things we forgot from yesterday. So the human body and brain is amazing. It can learn things about our preferences, <laughs> what we like, what we don't like, um, what we do on a daily basis, how to put on our shoes, how to put on pants, you know, um, but even more than that, right? Like how we behave in relationships and communication with other people. Um, all of that is, can be learned. It is learned to a certain degree and is subconscious. Uh, and a lot of that's happening at the nervous system level. So I have videos here on mobility mastery about nervous system patterns, which if this part of the nervous system interests you, you should go read those blog posts and watch the videos because I'm not going to dive into that here. Uh, I just want to touch on all of these and introduce you to these six critical roles, but not necessarily dive into all of them. Um, but there's a lot we could talk about here. Uh, so whenever I say nervous system pattern, what I mean is learned behavior that got ingrained at the nervous system level and became, became automated, automated at that subconscious level instead of conscious. And so if you want to take more conscious control of yourself, you need to identify those automated behaviors and then interrupt and change them and replace them with conscious ones that you're choosing. All right, number three, regulation. So, so many processes in the body need to be regulated at any given time, right? And those subsets of the nervous system that I was talking about include the somatic nervous system, which mostly has to do with motor nerves, right, and movement, um, but they're always kind of communicating and regulating your movement. Um, and then we have, of course, the autonomic nervous system and its subsets, the parasympathetic and sympathetic, uh, which most of you know, sympathetic is the stress response, right? And it's not 100% bad, you just don't wanna be in it all the time. And then there's the enteric nervous system, which is all about the gut. Um, so the gut part of your nervous system is huge, and I'm not going to dive into that one either today, but you have a ton of fascia here um, in the gut, and that gut fascia nervous system relationship, I think, plays a huge role in all kinds of things that you're regulating, be it body temperature, whether you're in fight, flight, freeze, whether your organs are getting protected, blood's rushing maybe to your organs instead of to your hands and feet if you're in fight, flight, freeze all the time, to regulating, of course, like everything from digestion um, and rest and repair states to whether you're running from a bear <laughs> and so much more, right? But we're constantly needing to regulate ourselves and a lot of it is at the subconscious level. But I believe we can take more conscious control of some of those regulation processes, make them conscious and especially if there's like regulation processes happening that are maybe sub um, healthy, like, you know, if they're keeping you alive, but not allowing you to thrive. So moving on here. This is going to be a fun one. <laughs> Oops. What the heck does she mean? <laughs> uh, subconscious safety switches. <laughs> um, I believe we all have certain triggers where our nervous system, when triggered in certain ways, immediately automates program behavior to 
you know, keep us safe, protect us, um, you know, uh, and most of the time it's subconscious. We don't think about it, right? These subconscious safety switches were learned usually in childhood. So what the heck do I mean by that? <laughs> um, well, it could be anything from maybe you got in a car accident when you were five, you're, you know, you're, you were in the car, your parents were driving, and now every time you get in a car, or maybe it's only when you're in the back seat, I don't know, but like your nervous system gets triggered and you know, you feel like maybe you're in danger. Um, so it could be something as simple as that uh, to something a little more complex and more psychological in nature, like I have talked about on this channel. So I like to use it in case you wanna go, you know, watch more, like use the examples I've already given you. So this might be familiar if you've been with me for any length of time, but I've talked about before how I had a major kind of nervous system pattern where it's definitely like subconscious for quite a while, but it triggered something in me where, you know, I didn't realize, I, you know, I made it conscious, so now I can verbalize it to you, but it was unconscious until I made it conscious. And the trigger was not believing I could depend on people. Um, and so if I was presented with the potential necessity of depending on somebody um, for, you know, anything really, but this came up in my relationship with Stefan, um, then it would trigger that switch in me and I would feel terror. <laughs> so um, this was unconscious, right? But it came up when I started talking about having kids with Stefan and the thought of having kids filled me, my nervous system with terror. Um, and it's because in my imagination, I would visualize being pregnant and kind of helpless. <laughs> Never been pregnant, so I don't know what it's gonna be like, but I projected onto that experience that I might be a little helpless and I might really need to depend on other people. Um, and it really triggered me. Now, there were plenty of minor triggers leading up to this point that probably didn't get my attention as much as that one, but that's just the one that I like to give because it's on that more sub, you know, really subconscious but more psychological, relational level, but it's still at the level of the nervous system where something got triggered and my system was going, oh no you don't, because if you do that, you could die. Um, and so I had to make that bodily sensation conscious and then make sense of it and then go, no I'm not. Like, I'm not gonna die. <laughs> I'm an adult now. I can take control of what's happening and make a different choice than I made when I was younger. So, lots to explore here. I would love to hear some ahas from you. If you think you have some subconscious safety switches going on in your nervous system, whether related to pain or just more on that psychological level, relationships or communication or behaviors in your life. And then moving on, kind of a good segue here. Subconscious to conscious. Now, this, this is probably more me. I mean, maybe this one too. <laughs> like these are somewhat, you know, scientific. You could kind of go look that up, find other people's uh, definitions or the way that they might explain it scientifically. You could probably do that with these three. Um, these two, a little less so. They're my own kind of theories that I've been working with with my in-person clients as well as just through researching neuroscience and the nervous system and human psychology and personal development. Um, but I believe that our bodies are always trying to get our attention and make us more conscious. Um, so, you know, I don't hold the belief that if something, if my body's giving me pain or my body's giving me discomfort, um, it's not my body trying to torture me or annoy me or piss me off or just do it for the heck of it. It's trying to make me conscious of something. And the more willing I am to actually pay attention to those signals, get conscious of them, and then let the communication, the message come through, then I probably can figure out what's causing it, take care of it, and make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> Hopefully, that would be the goal, right? So I definitely think there's a lot here to explore, even just on a you know, health level, going from surviving to thriving, uh, but I also think there's maybe more spiritual element here where something's trying to get our attention through our body. So we can talk about that with the enteric nervous system, right? The gut, like, are you listening to your gut? Are you allowing your intuition to come through your body and actually become a conscious message 
that you can use to live your best life. A lot of that comes through the body, in my opinion, not the mind. Um, so much of the time, I think our mind is actually in the way of our really wise, intelligent instincts and intuitions, which live in the body. But I think it doesn't have to stay subconscious, right? I think the goal is actually to make it, make all of those things conscious so we can become more free human beings. And then number six here is taking us all the way back to the top. <laughs> um, and it's, it's the big one. So they're the same thing. Number six, survival. But I wanted it to be really big so you got, got this because your brain and your body would much rather you be in pain than dead. Your brain would rather you be um, in a you know bad relationship than dead. Your brain would rather you be in maybe single than dead. <laughs> um, and all of this is like, you know, somewhat biological in nature, nature evolutionary, if you think about it. Uh, human beings, you know, for a long time depended on each other. We needed each other. We needed to belong to a tribe, to a group of people who hunted together or gathered food together or grew food together. Um, and so there's a relational aspect here in the nervous system, right, where we're assessing the world, assessing ourselves, finding out what our place is and all of it. And the number one goal that will always trump anything else is survival. Uh, so if you're, you know, again, we could, we could be here all day talking about this, but if you are in fight, flight, freeze a lot, if you have trauma um, that's kind of stuck on a loop and you haven't learned to, you know, you haven't addressed it or you haven't healed it um, or released some of that past stuff from your body, your brain and body don't necessarily process time. So it's kind of like you're still in it, you're still stuck. And your brain would, again, would rather keep you you know, in survival um, than dead. So a lot of the processes that go on in, uh, you know, in our bodies at the subconscious level are all about survival. And I believe the only way to truly thrive is by making them conscious and then directing our lives accordingly and actually learning to take care of our bodies much more consciously than we have been so that Again, we can thrive instead of being in that survival state that our nervous system is always kind of trying to assess and regulate. So, hope that makes sense. And I know this is like, there's a lot here uh, and we can dive into all of them even more in depth. If you ever join a course of mine, we definitely do that. But uh, this is just a really good overview of those six critical roles of the nervous system. Uh, and you could probably extrapolate from here how it might impact your fascia, uh, your quality of life, your quality of movement, how you feel in your physical body, right? So I'd love for you to share a takeaway below this video in the comments section. I'm definitely going to read these because this is one of my favorite topics to talk about, teach, and just nerd out on you guys with. So share your comments, your takeaways, your ahas in the comment section below. I will definitely see you there and comment back. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna join my email community, I have some fantastic free resources for you. Uh, some PDF guides, a free kinetics technique if you wanna try that. That's my method of stepping on uh, people to release fascia or partner fascia release. And I do email trainings that I don't do anywhere else on occasion. So if you're on that list, you'll get those trainings um, that you won't find anywhere else. So I hope you'll join me and definitely share those thoughts below. I'll see you there and I hope to see you next time as well. Bye guys.